What's up guys, how we doing? We're gonna be going over how to use a force velocity profile builder on an Excel spreadsheet. What you see here is a pre-made one already. And the way this guy works is I have the number of reps I'm gonna perform for each set on the left. I have the relative percentage of one RM, which is calculated retrospectively once this whole formula is done. I have each set I'm gonna do, and then I have the load for each set as well. Now, how to determine the load is based on the individual's level of strength. Typically, the ranges of 1RM starts at roughly 35% of the athlete's 1RM and goes up to roughly 75% to 70% of the athlete's 1RM. Now, we look here on the right, we have reps 1, 2, and 3 labeled, but not each set performs 3 reps. Our first set can perform 3 reps, the second one, 3 reps, the third rep, 2 reps, the fourth, sorry, the third set two reps, the fourth set, two reps, the fifth set, one rep. And we're gonna take the top velocity from each of these sets, but also make sure that that top velocity is done with good form. If you see someone cheat letting the bar come off of their back, they come up on their toes, or you just don't feel comfortable with the metric that you got from it, you're more than welcome to get rid of it and just keep the other velocities that you have recorded. It's best used with more velocities, but sometimes an outlier that may come from too light of a load can throw your profile off, which is why sometimes people advise to get rid of the 35% of the 1RM. Now, this is actually done even less than 35% of the 1RM, but it's just for the sake of the example, so please bear with me. Down here, you're going to see the do not touch variables. These are auto populators. This is going to populate your X, sorry, your Y intercept. This is going to populate your slope. This is going to populate your R squared. Your R squared is an indicator of how good your profile is. If the profile is above 0.95 R squared, then I keep it. Obviously, this is an excellent one of 0.99. And then down below is the auto populated profile. And you can mess with this yourself and make it um, you know, look a little cleaner. You can round some of it. You can also have it function. So you type in a load and it gives you a velocity. Right now we type in a velocity and it gives you a load as you just saw there. So the way this works, I'll have the athlete perform their first set. They'll perform three reps. They did a rep of 1.4 meters a second, 1.35 and 1.38 at a load of 45. Then their top velocity is obviously 1.4. Now the next load is 95. All I filled in was the velocity of, of 1.1, 1.11, and 1.09, taking the top one of 1.11, and that populates over on the right on my profile. And then 0.95 was the top velocity from the next set, with the two other reps being 0.9 and 0.95. For the sake of example, I'll type this in here. So on that fourth set, they did 0.8 meters a second on their first rep, 0.85. And you see good how that um, fills in right here. And let's say I get rid of that. I haven't filled it in. You'll see on my force velocity profile on the right how that dot just disappeared. So I'll do it one more time. The so 0.85, we'll come over here and we'll hit enter. And you'll see that dot appear. When I get rid of it, it disappears, right? So as we build this out, the sheet starts to come together. Then we had 0.7 as our final velocity. And we can see the R squared here, which I'll actually highlight for you guys, is really good. Now, we're pretending that this individual is doing a squat. And so I'm gonna have this guy be 0 0.1. We know the minimal voluntary threshold of a squat is roughly 0.3 seconds. So if I take this individual's run one rep max, I can take the low corresponding to 0.3 seconds. That's 219 pounds. And that fills in all these specific percentages here. Now again, you can mess around with this and you can clean it up a little bit by adding some round functions. The power is simply the load multiplied by the velocity. But what this gives you here is a nice, um, picture of what exactly the individual's force velocity profile is. I just did a presentation the other day and we were able to do this real time with three different people in roughly 11 to 12 minutes. We just had them go in a group after they were warmed up and go one to the next. This gives you a really good indicator of different speed zones for that person to train at, but also a way to track information over